Okay, so we're still on 2.4, ready, set, go. And then we're gonna do four, six, eight, nine, and 12. So it says, use the properties of logs to rewrite an indicated log in order to find the given values, then find the indicated log using the given approximate value. So first they want you to rewrite this using log properties. And then they want you to um, approximate it. So the very first thing that I want to do, and I don't know where this is on this page, hold on, let me find it, is this. I want to grab my log little log sheet right here. So I'm going to put it right here so I have access to it as I make, as I do these problems, right? So these properties are super important. If you don't have them, I always tell you my, um, my thing for whenever I was learning something, especially if there was a formula like this or something crazy like the quadratic formula, I would write it across the top of my paper so that it would go into my head and I could just reference it back and forth and pretty soon it would be in my head and not just on my paper. Okay, so the very first one I wanna do is this find log five divided by eight. And remember that we learned um, log and it doesn't have a little base there. That's just base 10, right? So I'm gonna put this right here. Okay, so then it says division here, division here. Oh, is subtraction. Oh, I remember that rule, right? So then I just need to write this out. So it goes log of five minus log of eight. Okay, log five minus log eight, which is nice because look, I know what log five is and I know what log eight is. Look at my curly um, equal two signs. So this is gonna be approximately um, 0.7 minus 0.9, which is approximately negative 0 0.2, okay? And some of you are thinking, but Ms. Johnson, you said you, you can't have a negative. I said that you couldn't take the log of a negative, not that your answers couldn't be negative. And I can prove this really quick, right? Because if I think about the log function, right? If I think about my log function, it has negative y values, but you can't plug in. It's, there's nothing negative here. So it's negative 0.2. So again, I see this division. I use the quotient rule, and then I plug in. That's all? Yes. OK, so number six, log of 1 over 2. Log of 1 over 2. So again, I'm going to use that same one. So I go. Um, log of one minus log of two. And then I'm like, wait a second. I don't know what log of two is. I don't, I don't know what log of two is. Mr. John said, wait, I don't know what log of two is. And I'm like, yeah, you don't know what log of two is. Okay, but you do know what log of one is. You do know what log of one is, right? You do know what log of one is. Log of one in your brain should be like um, 10 to the what gives me one. 10 to the what gives me one. And so this is just zero. So this right here is zero. So I'm comfortable with that, Ms. Johnson. I could do zero. So this is gonna be zero minus. Now, two, two, Ms. Johnson, they gave me 16, they gave me five, and they gave me eight. They didn't give me no two. Okay, so good. Good on thinking, man, Ms. Johnson, I would really like it if what? Okay, so I do recognize that I can get two to eight, right? I can get two to eight by multiplying by four, or I can cube two to give me eight. Does that make sense? So I'm going to use the fact here. I'm going to use two cubed equals to eight to get me there. And if you want, you can use 16 too. I'm just going to use eight because it's a lot cleaner of a number. So if, if that's the case, Ms. Johnson, can like, what would you, how would you do this? Well, because if I, if I know that two cubed equals eight, I also know that the cube root of eight is two right? I also know that the cube root of eight is two. So what does that mean, Ms. Johnson? What do you want me to do? So if instead of writing this two like this two, 
I'm going to write this two like this two. Ms. Johnson, that doesn't look like a two, but you see how I just proved it? So I'm going to write this as log of the cube root of eight. Okay, the cube root of eight is also known as two. So in reality, this is just a two here. Okay. I know it feels different, it feels weird. And that's okay. Okay. So, but that doesn't help me, Ms. Johnson, because I want it to say log of eight. Yes. And remember in a previous video that we talked about, right? We said that we can rewrite these um, radical exponents. We could rewrite these radical exponents to be. Um, sorry, we can rewrite the radicals into exponents. We could rewrite the radicals into exponents. Okay, so you want me to write to the one third? Yes. Okay, and I'm not gonna, I'm gonna drop off the zero because zero minus log of the cube root of eight is the same thing as negative log of cube root eight, eight right? So I'm gonna write that. So negative log eight to the one third. Log eight to the one third. Okay, so this is the same as this. This, these two are the same. They look different, but they're really thin. And remember, it's the same as two. So two is the same as the cube root of eight, Ms. Johnson, uh-huh, which is the same as eight to the one third, uh-huh. So what rule am I gonna use right now? What rule am I gonna use right now? Oh, Ms. Johnson, that power rule, you're gonna make it go as a coefficient. Exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go negative, right? And then I'm gonna put log eight and that one third is right there, right? There he is right there. Cause I know what this is, log eight. So then I write, oh, okay, I know what log eight is. So now this is approximately, right? This is approximately negative one third times, what is log eight? Uh, log eight is 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So negative one third divided by, I mean, sorry, negative one third times 0 0.9. Well, that's just about negative 0 0.3. So there's my answer. The key to this problem right here, I don't know why I'm writing diagonal. <laughs> is because we go from two to being like, oh, Ms. Johnson, I don't see two here, exactly. So, but you can, if you can get from one of these numbers to here, remember powers of, you're, all, you're consistently thinking of not five, 10, 15, 20, but you're consistently thinking of the powers of five. So five, 25, 125, and so on. Here, because it's two, I wanna think of the powers of two. So two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on. Make sense? Okay, next number is number eight, which is this guy right here, which I've, I've squished enough people in there. So I'm gonna move them over here. So again, I wanna think of how I can rewrite this using powers. So log of one over 64, log of one over 64, and you're like, Ms. Johnson, they didn't give me one of 64. So what should I be thinking? The very first thing I should be thinking of, oh, I see that division there. I see that division. Okay, so let's start there. As soon as this guy catches up to me, hold on. Okay, so I'm gonna do that subtraction there. So that's gonna be log of one minus log of 64, which we already learned, right? We already learned this is going to be a zero, right? This is a zero. So now I think about 64 and I'm like, oh, they didn't give me 64. And you're right. But what did they give me? What did they give me that would help me do this problem? Yeah, they gave me eight, log of eight. Oh, so instead of writing 64, you want me to write eight squared? Sure, if you wanna do eight squared, you could do eight squared or you could do eight times eight if you like. I tend to think about perfect squares because they're, I don't know, they come 
to my brain faster. But if you th saw this as eight times eight, then you notice here, you would use the product rule, but I'm going to be using the power rule. Now, no matter what, you should get the same exact answer. I'll show you that in a second. So the power rule goes like this. Everything goes like this. And then I'm going to put that two as a coefficient. So my answer here is negative two log eight, right? But then I have to simplify that. So that becomes negative two times uh, 0 0.9 which is negative 1.8. So there's my answer, right? And I said, it could be that you, you, you didn't think about it as eight squared, but you thought about it as eight times eight. So here's our alternative. So this is an alternative to this, right? Sorry, over here, not this one. Okay, so instead I could have thought about it as, um, let's see, I could have thought about it as negative log, of eight times eight, right? Eight times eight. And because that's eight times eight, then, then that's just the product rule. So then that's gonna be negative of log of eight plus log of eight. So Ms. Johnson, how can you put this in parentheses? Cause that negative needs to be applied to this whole thing. So I put it in parentheses, right? And what's a log eight plus a log eight, right? What's a Jennifer plus a Jennifer? What's a computer plus a computer? What's a car plus a car? It's two cars. So what's a log eight plus a log eight? It's two cars. It's two log eights with a negative out in front. Uh, oh man, Ms. Johnson, look, those two are exactly the same, I know. So which way do you like better? Great, do that way. I don't, it doesn't matter which way you do as long as it makes sense to you. Okay, next one. Um, here, they only gave you two and five, log base three of two and log base three of five. So you're trying to build a 16 from a two and a five and or a five, right? And so how would I build a 16 from a two or a five? How would I build a 16 from a two or a five? Yeah, so I'm gonna build it by saying um, two to the fourth is 16. Or yeah, two times eight would work too. Two times eight would work too. If you thought about two times eight, that works perfectly fine, but you're gonna to have to break that eight up again because again, you don't they didn't give you an eight. So I'm gonna go with two to the fourth and you'll see why in a second. So log base three of two to the fourth. So that means, right? That log base three stays and that four jumps all the way out in front as a coefficient. So it's four log base threes of two, which I know is 0 0.6. So this is just four times um, 0 0.6. And this is when I get my curly braces on. And so that is approximately 2.4. Okay. Okay, number 12. So this one again, right? This one right here. Um, again, eight over 15, that's reminding me of my quotient rule. So I'm gonna be subtracting there. My mouse is cuckoo. Okay, so here I go. I'm gonna rewrite this as um, log base three of eight minus log base three of 15, right? And I'm like, ooh, they give me an eight, but I know what to do with that because I just dealt with that. So that's gonna be two cubed. So log base three of, and then this, I'm gonna write two cubed because I know what to do with that, right? Two cubed, that makes sense. But the 15 to me is a little bit funky, right? So the 15, the way I can rewrite 15 is, so I'm gonna go log base three and how would I rewrite 15? Like what would make sense for me to rewrite 15 given these um, ingredients here? Yeah, it's five times three. And actually five times three is perfect. 
And if you know why five times three is perfect, it has to do with what they gave you. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, you know how to do this part here, right? So that's just gonna kind of go quickly. That's gonna be three log base two, oops, sorry, I did that wrong. Three log base three of two. And this is the part that's interesting. Again, I'm gonna use parentheses around this whole thing because this minus gets the whole thing. This minus gets the whole thing. So I'm gonna put parentheses around this big thing here. So here I'm gonna go with log base three of five plus log base three of three. Now you should recognize one of these, right? You should recognize one of these. Three, five, that's that one. Log base three of five is 1.5, okay. But what about log base three of three? What's log base three of three? Yeah, it's just one. So this is the number one. So I'm, I'm pretty much done here. So I'm going to go with three times log base three of two is 0 0.6, right? Minus log base three of five is 1.5 and then plus one. Okay, so plus one. And then, so here, this is where my curly equal sign goes. And then I'm just gonna simplify. So three times 0.6 is 1.8 minus 2.5, which is approximately negative 0.7. So there's my answer. Okay, there is my answer. All right, hopefully that makes sense to you.